In this urban heartbeat, the smell of roasted coffee beans reminds me of my Costa Rican roots. I think of my dad, a pioneer in coffee producing, creating opportunities for the farmer, the families, the community. I now carry my dad's legacy. And for down to earth, this is where it all started. Coffee is not just a drink, it's an experience. A moment between friends, family, even new acquaintances. Hi, Ever. Oh, hi. Juliana, how are you doing? It's I'm very good. nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you so much for meeting me here. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm excited. Where are we? This is Puerto Rico Importing Company. It's one of the oldest coffee companies in New York City. Okay, so we're gonna try some coffee? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Awesome. We're in Greenwich Village typically called The Village, which was historically a very Italian okay. neighborhood. So Puerto Rico that we just finished was a market where you could get olive oil and fresh bread and spices, and tomato sauce, and also Italian coffee. It and Cafe Reggio were probably two of the most significant like, destinations for Italian mm -hmm. folks here in The Village. This was probably one of the first places in America where people could have exposure to classic Italian cappuccino and espresso drinks. Smells good. It's amazing how much has happened in New York City that has affected coffee in the whole country. So many things were invented here. The first espresso machine came to New York City. The modern coffee roaster was invented in New York City. And then you also have these amazing different immigrant enclaves that bring their own culture. One of the first espresso machines that came to New York is right here, yeah. Cafe Reggio, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. So the espresso machine that was brought to Cafe Reggio was mm -hmm. built in the very early 1900s, one of the first models of its kind that existed. And it was imported here when they first opened the cafe in the 20s. It was the first one that was in the village, the first mm -hmm. restaurant that served cappuccino. So it was like sort of an icon. And it drew people from other parts of the city too, to sort of come and experience Italian coffee culture. Wow, so the immigrant culture has played a lot of a big part of the coffee scene. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. While there's Italian coffee culture here, mm -hmm. in other parts of town there was German coffee culture. Mm -hmm. Greek coffee culture was really big in parts of town too. So they like all come together to make New York coffee, you know? As we navigate the city, I find myself at a crossroad of heritage and innovation. How can I be the next pioneer in coffee producing? We are in Washington Square Park. This site is important to me because my coffee hero was born on the north side of the park, Alice Foot McDougall. She was the first female coffee broker in New York City. She took over the business from her husband when he passed away. At that time, it was so uncommon to have a woman in the coffee business that she had stationery made that said A.F. McDougal, so no one would know that she was, was a, a woman. woman. Uh huh. She decided to open a coffee store in Grand Central Terminal. And one day, there was this big storm in the spring, and she went home and got her waffle iron and decided to make waffles to try and entice people to come into the shop. Mm -hmm. And selling the waffles with the coffee totally transformed her business. And so she wrote coffee and waffles with the recipe for waffles that she was selling out of the shop. Wow. I know. This and then is, she ended up beautiful. being a multimillionaire, opening many different restaurants in the city and was like one of the first modern coffee shop owners. So she was a pioneer yeah. for women in coffee, yeah. not only in New York, but in the United States and I guess the whole world. And it's really cool because so much of what she built still exists in spirit around the city. At the time, lunch counters were much more popular, where people were just in and out. This concept of sitting down and having a cup of coffee and savoring the experience was kind of a new idea. She was really inspired by the coffee culture in Europe, where people would join together and sit down and talk over a cup of coffee. And that concept didn't really exist here at that time, because people were drinking coffee really fast and then zipping off onto their day. So she really brought the concept of sitting down, having a social moment with coffee to the U.S., inspired by all of her travels in Europe with her dad. That's beautiful. That reminds me of my story, because my dad 
helped me understand coffee in a different way, more of a community, as a social setting. And it's such an easy way to connect because everybody speaks coffee. It's a universal language. Coffee creates a global community, a bond that transcends rich flavors and cultural exchanges. The origin of coffee in the Americas. The coffee district is the area from the seaport back up until like Water Street, and that's where all of the coffee houses were located. When you walked through the coffee district, there was like a cloud of coffee smoke, you know, you could smell the roasting yeah. everywhere. This whole area was really concentrated for the coffee business. This is where the coffee from the origin countries came. Yeah. And this is where all the relationships started. Meeting exporter and importer, consumer and producer, yeah. that sort of like intersection, I guess. This is where coffee ships would come in. Mm -hmm. Sample boys would come and run up onto the ships and grab little tins of coffee. And then they would run throughout the coffee district and try and sell the coffee by sight only. So they would run up to different brokers and they would inspect it by sight, take bids, and then at the end of the day, sort of settle up all of the bids, figure out who bought what. But this was historically where everything happened, the whole coffee industry. And the unique part is that when my dad came to school, he was here in New York. And here in the city was the first time that he started to reflect on what could it be. How can we make a coffee company different? How can we progress the idea of the farmer? How can we give the farmer back its power? He saw the consumer side that normally people in the origin countries yeah. back then didn't really see. He saw how much people were willing to pay for a good cup of coffee, how much people wanted to connect with the farmer. They wanted to do more than free trade. They wanted yeah. to do direct trade. It was all inspired here in New York City. So I feel it's like a full circle moment to come back here now and be able to see all the beauty and the origins and the experiences and everything that New York's coffee culture has to offer. I am seeing how this city shaped my dad because it's shaping me. Okay, can you explain to me what a New York ad cream is? Yeah, sure. Okay. It's a classic New York drink and that is a little bit of chocolate syrup, mm -hmm. seltzer, and then topped off with wow. cream or milk. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's really interesting. <laughs> They're really nice, actually. This is Joe, Coffee. Joe Coffee. Yeah, it was one of the first, like, third wave coffee shops in the okay. city. And it's actually where I worked for a you long did. time. Yeah. And it was one of the first coffee shops to do like really high end specialty, okay. like refined coffee. We were one of the only shops in the city that did latte art. In a way, they were also pioneers. Yeah. yeah. Look at look at every coffee shop now, just yeah. latte art. Yeah, exactly. They started right here. It's still a family owned business. Okay. They just have several more locations now. Do you want something iced, maybe? I might have an ice drink, yeah. I was gonna say, it's pretty warm. Would you say that this is a significant coffee shop for coffee culture in New York? Yeah, I would, actually. There were just a handful of shops at that time in the early 2000s that were like really pushing the envelope for quality. Joe, Cafe Grumpy, uh, 9th Street Espresso, I'd say Gorilla Coffee, those were sort of the big four. Thank you for taking me here, yeah, and I'm you. excited to Live your full circle moment with you. <laughs> this moment, through New York City's coffee history, was more than a tour. It was a self-discovery. I am inspired to honor the past and embrace the future.